Hi, this is Nick with Zamora Woodworking. Today what I wanted to go over and show you how to do is to mass produce these uh, charcuterie boards. As you can see here, I got quite a few. I've already given away, I think like four or five as presents for this year. The process is gonna be like how to plane them, how to put them on a grid, how to cut them properly. Uh, after that, I'll show you how I cut in the inlays, I'm not gonna go over the whole inlay process. I'll do that in another video for you, uh, or else this one would drag on for forever, because that is a very in-depth process. However, uh, I failed to mention in the video, the blanks that I start with, the, the process you can use on any size blanks or any way you wanna cut this. It is uh, 21 uh, by eight and a quarter. So in this video, I think I cut in five at a time. Uh, using this process, you could cut more depending on how many you want to squeeze in, what size you want to use. This process, you know, setup takes the longest amount of time and you want the machine to just run. So I try to make it as simple as possible and kind of explain what I was doing and thinking. Don't mind this here. This is a topographical map. I'm in the process of finishing, but it's leveled right now, so I can't really move it. And I'm filming the intro to this video a little bit later uh, because of all the things happening during this time of year, uh, Christmas and all that. But anyways, this is a good way to get Christmas presents out the door. It shouldn't take too terribly long. Uh, really the thing that took the longest for me was getting these nice and flat and smooth. If you are going to plane with your CNC, I would advise to look up my tramming video that'll really help you save a lot of sanding or else you'll have big marks whenever you do this, depending on which way you go. That will take a lot of time to sand out. I like to say thanks a lot for Click on the video, checking us out. Uh, it really helps if you can like, share, subscribe, especially subscribe, costs you nothing, helps us out a ton. Small channel, trying to grow. As a thank you for you guys subscribing, spending your time here, checking us out, giving me a little bit of feedback, this and that. Uh, once we hit a thousand subscribers with my own money, not affiliated with anybody else, I was going to purchase one of these Jenny bits that everyone loves so much and I, I use them for all my nice projects. I actually used them in this project. Uh, I was going to purchase it with my own money and mail it out to one lucky subscriber. Uh, so once we hit a thousand, you know, as long as you subscribe, you're automatically entered. It's all my money, not affiliated with anybody else. Uh, other than that, uh, videos you can look forward to soon will be the topographical map. And then I just recently made this uh, dust collector here from scratch. At least the back of it, the front of it's the pawn CNC. But the back of it, I made it all so it's all integrated with this cable tray. So I'm slowly getting around to that gonna take a little bit, but it's all fully adjustable. Everything's held in place. Here you can see your bit up front. Um, this is all pawn CNC, these brackets, and this is all right here. And then, uh, yeah, I'll make a video on that and how I got that all to go. And if you're following along and you wanna support me, um, I basically buy me a beer, a couple bits. That's what it ends up to. I don't make a ton of money on it, but uh, I do have an Etsy store have the files for these on there, um, how to mass produce them. I kind of walk through it, so I mean, you could really figure it out on your own if you just want it already done for a couple bucks, almost nothing, and kind of help me out, that'd be cool too. Uh, if not, your subscribe is thanks enough, so. Okay, with these charcuterie boards, I wanted to plane all these down. I did not, with my different types of wood, I did not first plane them down with my planer, make them all the same size. It made it would have made it a little bit easier. Had I done that, I wouldn't have to do both sides flattening, but since I got the machine and I don't mind doing it and it's cold as hell outside, I'm going to just do it this way. So what I'm first gonna do is take one of these lines here, take one of these lines and just one of these boards since these all don't line up perfectly. And you don't wanna put them way down here because if they don't, you want the bit to be able to come off the edge and then come back on so it doesn't burn your board. So what I do whenever I do this is I put the side that I want to be the bottom on top first so I can flatten the bottom first. I'm, I'm flattening the bottom by putting it on top. It's counterintuitive. It'll work. And then when I'm doing this first flattening run, uh, you notice I only have three right here. I've already flattened all my other ones. It all worked. So I thought I'd make a video to show you guys. but. You can take them all and put them as close as you can side by side so they kind of hold each other. Because on this side, I only use glue to hold them. So if I glue this piece, this piece, this piece, they kind of hold each other. So with this, these are all gonna be bottoms. There's three boards here. There's one here, one here, and one here. I'll just go down here. 
couple dabs of hot glue. And yes, it's gonna pull up on here. If you wanna put blue tape down first and then do this, that's fine. It's a waste board, I don't really care. If it gets too chewed up, then I'll just get a new one. But do that. And the reason why you're putting glue is one, to hold it from flying around, but two, to also hold it from rocking. You don't want it to do that either. So if we get to this back part, unplug it, the glue is already warm enough. And I'll do some dabs over here. Okay, I'll let the glue dry first before you do anything crazy. Uh, and then I will do my flattening runs. I'll use a bit like so. And I will not put it at too high of a rate. I'll probably put it on two, maybe three on that, but I'll also move super fast. This is cherry. Cherry will burn. You can see right here it burned a little bit from whoever planed it from when I first got it. But what I'll do is I'll set up a flat even program that I'll just set my zero somewhere down in here. And then find, see this is a little bit lower, find a spot here. I won't actually use my block or anything like that. I'll just lower down the bit and have it to where it's just barely touching. That'll be good enough for me to take my Z zero. I'll create a program, real, real simple, a uh, pocketing path that will be a square slightly bigger than this because what you want to do is have your, you can also do etch a sketch mode if you want, but what you want to have happen is whenever it goes through, I will also not have it do, I believe it's raster where it goes in a square because every time it stops, it's going to stop and burn, stop and burn, stop and burn, stop and burn. But uh, I'll burn the hell out of the wood. What I want it to do is go up and down, up and down or left and right. So I will take these measurements here, I'll add on like two inches or an inch, whatever. Take this measurement here, add on an inch or two, and set up my program to where the bit starts here, goes all the way through, finishes here. Moves over, all the way over, finishes here. Goes over, let it run, come back, make sure it hit everywhere. If it didn't hit everywhere, have it run again, take off just a little bit more, Z zero it again. Uh, X and Y you shouldn't have to do again. Have it run again. Uh, you don't want to take off a lot of a time, but have it move fast because it'll burn this. It'll look something like that. Um, but yeah, don't don't have it start in the center and go like this all the way out. Uh, you can see in your tool path, at least on VCarve, on the right hand side, it'll show you what it's going to do, which way you want it to go. And uh, I like it to go like that. You can also do off grit, off set of uh, degrees and have it go like this if you'd like whatever your preference is, but yeah, this thing isn't moving. And since I'm gonna be taking off just a hair and going across it, I mean, me pushing like that is way more force than this board's gonna, gonna experience. So get these flattened and then I'll show you what I'm doing next. So these guys are the ones you just saw. They got planed on the bottom side, which was the top, flipped them over. Uh, then with this side, since this will be the actual, you know, doing the cutout and everything else, uh, obviously you can tell that these boards are not flat yet. So in a program, I'm gonna set up a planing run with these and just have it plane everything down a little bit and make sure that I got them all flat. <clears throat> so with the other side, I used hot glue. This side, I don't use hot glue because I don't want it to move. Once I start cutting that, I need the space because in the program, I'm going to set up a, a piece of material that's going to go from here to here in uh, V carve. And then in there, I'll draw little boxes where these are actually lined up. So if you look at my numbering, this one starts at zero. This one starts at 10, 20, 30, 40. 
So I'll draw a box. I won't actually use that for a cutout. It'll just be a reference to where I know my material is. <clears throat> then I'll copy the shape onto there, copy the shape onto each one of these, then create my tool paths. For the planing run, I'll just do the entire big box. Uh, I'll add an inch onto this so the, the bit comes out and then goes back down and I'll have it do those passes. I know that right here it's not going to be cutting anything. You know, it adds on a little bit of time, but for all the time I'm going to save, it's great. Also, whenever you do this, make sure you see here these screws are all recessed. That is on purpose because when I do this planing run, you see these lips right here. Once I get this flat, it's obviously going to remove material and I don't want to hit those screw heads or else if you do, you're going to need a new bit. It's going to suck. Don't want to buy a new one. I will do a quick little time lapse. You'll see these guys get planed down and then I'll go into my program and set it up to cut out the charcuterie board. This was the most efficient way that I found. I guess I could drop this down. I could do more up there. That added benefit isn't worth the hassle, I don't think. I'd just rather do more production runs of this. And then also, so I'm going to do inlays as well. <clears throat> Keep track of where the spot is where you want to do your inlay. So like mine is going to be done with this darker wood. So I got to know where this is at. So obviously it's flipped here and then it'll be here. But the handles, no matter what, whenever I cut them, I like to cut those all the same. So the handles will be up here and I like to do the inlays or the inlays down here. This way the handle will be up there, the inlay will be down here, and I want it to be facing, like that'll be the, the bottom. This will be the top of the inlay, so the letter will be right there. But the way I got these set up, uh, if you have something weird that like, you know, like here on the outside that's messed up, put it towards the top. When we cut out the handles of these right here, you know, if there's something wrong with this piece of wood, you're not gonna use that anyway. So if this is how I'm gonna cut them out, well, I guess this would be more representative. But I'm going to come out like that and then here's where my inlay is going to go with this. But with this one, I got to remember that it's flipped. I tried to do them all the same, but with this one I ran out of wood, something yada yada yada. No one will ever notice because people are only going to get one of these a piece. But one thing you don't want to end up doing is cutting out your letter here. You know, you run your program to do your V carves and it cuts out your letter here and then shit, your inlay is going to look crappy. So keep track, know where your spot is because you want the offset of the dark wood and on the white wood or white wood on the dark wood whatever you pick but i'll start running that and i'll catch up with you here in a little bit but yeah this is what they're gonna end up looking like something like that and then come back through and just fill these with uh, ca glue i think i used star bond on these worked out real nice i still got to sand these out a little bit but all right
as you can see here, I got all mine carved out. I did the I did the positive for the inlays here. Uh, what I'll do next, use one of these flush cut saws. These are super cheap, you can get them on Amazon, whatever. It says for softwood, hardwood, I've never really found too much of a difference to how they work. Obviously the teeth are a little bit different. But with these guys, I find it real nice. See my tabs there? Okay, so with these saws, the nice thing about them, I guess they're also called pull saws, is you can put them flush up against here and then you can cut and it makes it damn near perfect cut. A lot of people use them like, you know, you have something sticking up, just go like that, you can bend it, cut it. I'll cut these pretty close, they're not gonna be 100%. Then after that, I'll take it over to here, I'll bring this guy over, I'll put a flush trim bit on there, trim those tabs up, make them nice and smooth and then take them up to the shop and put the chamfer on the edges here, all the way around on the top and bottom, and then make the negatives for these, glue those in, and then the nice thing about that is if you leave a little space between the negative, you can cut it through with this and not really damage the top and then just light sanding and you're done, good to go. So I'm gonna get the cutting on these, I'll just make it a nice little time lapse. Okay, so at the end there, you saw me uh, cut these out and I didn't really show the sanding process because that's not really interesting or how I finish these with finish. I did use walrus oil, not sponsored by anybody or anything. Just heard a lot of people rave and review about it. I do like it, I enjoy the finish. This is, this is one of the ones I made. This is African mahogany and walnut here. And then with the walnut inlay, I really, really like how this turned out and how it shines. But uh, with this, I also used a V-bit to get me that inner profile there because with the router table, it'd be kind of difficult and want to spin around on you. But hopefully you learned something. Hopefully this helped you. If it did, uh, please leave, like, share, subscribe. Like I said before, it truly, truly, truly helps us grow. Also check out the Etsy store. I got files on there. Uh, I try to keep them very, very reasonably priced. Not, I really don't make hardly anything from it, but I uh, appreciate the uh, feedback and everything else you guys have been giving me. Uh, hopefully this helped you get along, and I'll see you in the next one. Look out for the rest of our videos. Uh, we have videos on how to make the spoil board, how to set up your one fin in general, how to tram your machine, which tramming is making sure that it is true to your waste board, which will be true to your material, and make sure it doesn't leave lines. Uh, Hopefully that'll help some of you guys. I have other mass production videos and there'll be a lot more coming out in the future. I'm slowly figuring this out, the whole editing and just trying to find time because each video takes me a couple hours to put together and film and everything else. And so do the best I can and truly appreciate all the positive feedback and I'll see you in the next one.